Fantastic. So a lot of uncertainty in the next few days for Aer Lingus passengers. What's the kind of latest developments in the situation right now? Well, unfortunately, we won't see an end to the uncertainty for a little while. What we do know is that Aer Lingus are contacting thousands, tens of thousands of customers about their travel options. They're asking them, do they want to change the date? They're asking them, do they want a refund or did they want to accept a voucher, which is pretty generous terms. It's five years before expiry. That will probably enable Aer Lingus to make the decision of how it responds to the trade union threat of a work to rule between Wednesday and Sunday of next week. And it will probably set the framework for future negotiations when they restart between the union and the airline. There's a lot of Tweedledee, Tweedledum. Uh, I wouldn't pay a hell of a lot of attention to that. What tends to happen is everybody trades insults. IALPA are trying to work out how much damage they can inflict on the airline. The airline is trying to work out whether they can need uh, the IALPA pilots or whether they can continue to fly using other resources internationally at their uh, bestowal. So what will happen over the next few days really is a softening up on both sides. Then at some stage, we have got to get back talking again. I would expect the talks mightn't go well at the start. They might break down. We might be in the WRC. But the reality is there's a lot to be hopeful about here because it's a very complex pay agreement. There are 26 different pay scales for pilots and there's a lot of other productivity agreements in there. Aer Lingus are saying, we'll give you more money if it's cost neutral. That means we start horse trading the unfortunate thing for passengers is they seem to be intent on getting over this process of a work to rule and the preemptive cancellations by Aer Lingus in advance of those talks. Thank you. Very, very likely that Ryanair will be part of the mix if Aer Lingus decide to fly through an all out strike or even uh, an escalated work to rule. They also have access to other IAG aircraft and they will be able to charter in wet lease aircraft. The problem is it's a lot more difficult to do that in peak season in summer than it is in winter, but it certainly is possible. And it's quite an unlikely coalition to see Ryanair and Aer Lingus um, cooperating, but uh, this is the aviation business. Unlikely things happen all the time. Everywhere they can find spare capacity, they will be looking. And also we got to remember that Aer Lingus Regional is a separate airline with a separate pilot agreement. They've already agreed to their increase and they won't be affected at all by the work to rule. We also have to remember this is not a strike and the number of flights that are to be cancelled between 10 and 20 percent. That it's very easy to work out 220 flights a day at this time of the year. That means that we're looking at a disruption which would not be unusual for a big weather event. Uh, for instance, when the French air traffic control last went on strike, 36 flights from Dublin were cancelled and Ryanair had 300 flights cancelled altogether, more than Aer Lingus fly in a day. Aviation is good at coping with disruption on a scale like this and good at picking up the pieces. Aer Lingus are determined to keep it to around that level of maybe 20, 30 flights where they can cope and not see it escalate to all 220 flights, which is where we will be if IALPA decide to move to a full scale strike. There's no indication of what routes will be affected, but we can speculate. We can speculate they're going to uh, tr defend the transatlantic routes, the key transatlantic routes and the key routes like Heathrow. Uh, we also have trunk routes like Malaga and Faro, which have a lot of frequencies a day and good options um, on Ryanair as an alternative. So they will be looking at all of those. I would expect uh, them also, if they're going to cancel, to look to routes where they have many frequencies and they can move passengers from a one-time air timed aircraft uh, flight to another one. They also will be looking at having a little bit of excess for when things start going wrong because it the nature of a work to rule is you don't get much notice of the event that will uh, mean a, an aircraft will be left without a pilot to fly it. So they really need a little bit of wriggle room for that. That's what they'll be looking at.